Hey folks, welcome back. Time for something we haven't done in a while, which is a puzzle unboxing. Um, I got these six big bad boys here from speedcubing.org, based here in the UK. And uh, it just came through this morning. Um, there's not really a box to unbox because Royal Mail trashed the outer container. Uh, this seems to be happening a lot lately. <laughs> they actually uh, stuffed it in a bag with an apology note on it that said, um, you know, if, you, if anything is damaged, you may be able to, to claim, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but luckily, all the boxes seem fine. Um, they were nicely wrapped up in bubble wrap uh, by speedcubing.org, so everything came out pretty well. Um, just to note, um, I mean, I'm obviously a very small channel, but some people seem to think I have a sponsorship or something. Nobody sponsors me. I buy these puzzles with my own money, um, and I haven't bought any, any in a while because uh, there's a cost of living crisis. My union was on strike for a very long time. Um, but what I have been doing is downsizing my board game collection and replacing them with RPGs, which are smaller, uh, cheaper, and take up less space. Um, so I've been taking the money from selling those board games and getting other games. So that's why there's been a lot of RPG videos lately and a lot, a lot of puzzle videos because I don't want to sell any of my puzzles. Um, but I happen to have some extra money in the account this month. So I decided to get some. And we got a bunch of puzzles here I'm really excited about. Um, first of all... We've got the uh, first ever magnetized stickerless Gigaminx, which I am just absolutely insanely excited about. We've got the new uh, Moyu Aoshi WRM 6x6, uh, which is my favorite um, puzzle to speed solve, the 6x6, so I'm looking forward to that. This is the Diane Megaminx V2M, uh, very popular with the Megaminx speed solvers, and I'm, I'm really determined to get better at the Dodecahedron's um, in the coming weeks and months, both the Mega Minx and the High Order ones. Um, then we have the new um, Yushin, I think it's Yushin, yeah, Yushin, uh, 7x7 Terra Minx, not magnetized. So I'll feel very silly when Diane releases one with magnets and then I buy it again, but I've already done that once. <laughs> I bought the um, stickerless Yushin Mega Minx and then the magnetized one came out shortly afterwards. Um, and we have a 5x5 triangle cube, a.k.a. Uh, Pyraminx, which is also from Yushin. And then we have uh, from Yushin's little magic line, I believe, uh, a 4x4 Master Pyraminx. Um, so it's much nicer looking than the Chi one that I have. I'm hoping it turns a lot better as well, but we shall see. It's very light, I have to say. Nice, small size to it. So, where to start? Um, I think we'll start anti-clockwise. And we'll start with the Diane first, see what this guy looks like. Um, now, I, as I've mentioned, I'm very bad at Mega Minx. Um, I do have a uh, Yoohoo V2M, which is also a very popular option um, for speed cubing when doing the Mega Minx event. How the hell do I open this? <laughs> um, but uh, this guy is a little bit smaller. Um, my hands are pretty big, so size usually is an issue for me, but I just thought maybe changing things up, having a, a puzzle with a different grip, different style of turning. The the, v, the um, Yuhu V2 is quite loose in the turning, um, and I'm, I'm not very accurate, so I'm hoping that this will be... Yeah, the magnet feel is definitely there, um, and a bit light, I would say medium to light. Uh, it's definitely smaller than the Yuhu. I can feel it. It feels smaller in my hand, but it's still comfortable to manipulate. Um, the colors are nice, I have to say. The, every, the yellow, you can see, is very vibrant. Um, got a lovely, nice orange there as well. In fact, you know what? I should put a little bit more light on the subject here while we're looking at these things. I'll just dial that down a little bit so you don't get blinded to death. There we go. Okay. Um... So yeah, now my biggest complaint with Mega Minx is that I always mix up the two greens, but they are very nicely differentiated here. This is much more sort of vibrant, almost neon. This is a deep dark green, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, I do wish they had black caps instead of gray. However, there is a box in here, and I'm desperately hoping they have some black caps, but I don't know how likely it is. Nope. Um, they have some spare springs. They have a tool. And we have a cube carrier bag. It's quite nice, actually. It says Diane on it. Uh, we should have had a Mega Minx there, but, you know, can't have everything. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, it's unfortunately difficult for me to judge this as a speed cube because, um, you know, my best Mega Minx time is like five minutes or something pathetic like that. Um, I'm much, much better at cubes. And what the reason I seem to struggle is that um, with recognition, basically. When you add 12 colors instead of six, my brain just cannot process fast enough uh, to make the moves I need to make. But I really like the feel of this guy. Um, so I think this is going to be a good fit for me. It's pretty easy to grip as well. You can see it's got um, ridges around the edges here of all the outer pieces. Um, so if I, uh, yeah, all the faces have those. And you can see again, you know, the, the gray and the cream are still pretty easily differentiable. Uh, if I bring that round to the white side, yeah, you know, it's 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 okay. I still would prefer to have black on the other side like I do on the Yuhu V2M. Um, I don't know if, if, if anybody knows if they're making black caps for these guys, let me know, because I'd certainly like to do that. I suppose I could paint it or something, but then it would just be a really sloppy job because I'm not very clever about those sort of things. Um, corner cutting is very good, actually. More than a full piece. You can see there. Um, and it turns effortlessly and I can keep wow I can keep going <laughs> still going that's a full 45 degrees that's past 45 degrees there we go got a little bit tougher there so yeah incredible corner cutting um, the magnets are a bit light for my taste but I don't know if they're adjustable or not uh, they may not be I don't think so um, but probably it's it's a good thing to get used to I think most Mega Minxes, the, the magnetic feel is lighter. Um, that seems to be the case anyway. Um, but it looks lovely. Uh, it's a lot more expensive than the Yuhu V2M, so keep that in mind. This cost me like 27 pounds, and the Yuhu is about 12. So, uh, but I decided, you know, if I'm going to get serious about the Dodecahedrons, then, you know, let's get serious. Let's get all the, the best puzzle options, and then I can't blame it on the equipment. <laughs> uh, all right, next, what was next in order? We had the Aoshi WRM 6x6, which I'm super excited about, as I mentioned. I love 6x6. I've used my MGC 6x6 cube so much. Like, whenever I'm stressed out, which is all the time, um, that's my comfort solve. I solve it all the time. Um, now, I am an old man. I'm not a... Sorry about the crinkly noise. I am not a youngin with uh, great reflexes, and so my times are very unimpressive by world standards, but I just try to be better each day than I was the day before. That's all you can do, really. Uh, I have also the WRM 7x7, which is a lovely piece of equipment, so I have high hopes for this guy. Um, it's just nice to have some competition for the MGC, really, because, I mean, that thing's been out for years, and it kind of revolutionized 6x6. Um, people started just breaking records left and right, and nobody could really compete with it. Um, GE came out with one under the X-Man Designs moniker that got really mixed reviews. Ooh, but this feels nice. Uh, it has a nice, kind of crunchy, very solid feel, similar to the Aofu WRM, the 7x7, which also came out very recently. Now, the thing with big cubes is you don't want to go too crazy with corner cutting, uh, but this, yeah, that's about stretching it. So you can get about a piece on the outer layer, so that's not too bad. If we do two layers, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and this is fresh out of the box. You know, I haven't done anything to it. I haven't played with the tensions. I actually felt the Alfu WRM 7x7 was pretty much perfect right out of the box for me. Um, it's definitely louder than the MGC and slightly smaller. I can I think this one is 63 millimeters, and the MGC 6x6 is 65. Um, but yeah, if you're going to get a 6x6, which you really should because it's the best cube, um, look into this one. However, again, it is much more expensive. The MGC you can get for about 20 quid or, or even less. I think it's like 16 quid or so on um, speedcubing.org. Um, but this one was a big fat 34 pounds. Um, but yeah, I can feel magnets on the outer layers are a bit lighter, definitely stronger on the second layer. 
and strongest on the inner layer, which is what I would expect. So that's nice. That means I can do crazy things like M slice moves with all four inner layers, which is very cool. Lots of security. Uh, it just feels incredibly stable, um, really fast right out of the box, much like the 7x7. Seven seven. Uh, so yeah, really happy with this. I think um, I'll have to do a few solves on it and kind of compare it directly to my performance with the MGC, but this could very well be my new replacement. Um, however, I've never properly sat and set up really any of my speed cubes. Um, I don't do a lot of like lubing or anything like that. Um, I follow the speed cube review channels recommendations that, you know, loop is kind of given a lot of importance in the community, but actually you don't really need it. I mean, a lot of the time. So uh, it's more about taste. You can still get perfectly good times on an unmoved cube uh, as long as it's well made and you're comfortable with it. So yeah, uh, definitely up to my expectations. It feels very, very similar to the Alpha WRM, which pretty much replaced the 7x7 MGC for me. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty promising. Uh, we've also got a box of stuff that I'm sure I don't need. Um, yeah, we've got some uh, how to solve a 6x6. Six six. I definitely don't need that. And we have a adjustment tool. Uh, this one doesn't have any fancy adjustment features, I don't think. I think it just has a... Yeah, there's just a screw adjustment um, in the center of each face there. You can see that it's quite... Uh, the tensions are quite tight out of the box, but I like it that way, uh, at least until I get comfortable with the cube. Uh, the magnet strength, I think, is, is pretty much about right. Um, so yeah, that's the Aoshi WRM 6x6. This is all just very quick first impressions. Um, you know, I'm not a pro cuber, uh, so I don't want to pretend that I am uh, and give you bad advice, but this is just my f sort of first impressions out of the box um, compared to the cubes that I'm used to. Now, there's nothing really to compare this with, uh, magnetized Gigaminx, uh, except for I brought out my... Um, Stickerless Gigaminx from Yushin. So just to compare size and, and turning and stuff. So we'll have a look at this. Um, I really, I'm, I'm just so excited this has come out. But the thing is, I know that the WCA, who are the kind of world, the World Cubing Association, Association um, they are very, very loath to add new events to the schedule. And even though we now have good cubing hardware for these higher order um, Gigaminxes, I would be absolutely shocked if they added an official event for it, which I think, you know, they have they have actually tried to, like, there have been movements to try and remove 7x7 seven seven solving, for example. Like, they only want events that are super quick. Um, and I personally don't find those that interesting, because then it's just like, okay, you've got the 2x2, two two, you bashed out, you know, two algorithms in 0.5 seconds, and I didn't see what happened, so I, I don't really care. Um, I prefer watching longer solves, because then I can sort of slow it down a bit and try and get a sense for what tricks they're doing. Um, okay, this doesn't really want to come out, does it? Don't be shy. Is there any tape? Nope, it's not me being stupid. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything like this where... I mean, I've seen that people getting times of around five minutes with this already, which is insane, and that's, you know... Um, I think the cutoff for 6x6 and 7x7 is like 10 minutes to get an official time recorded. So, you know, you know, there's nothing kind of prohibitive about this um, being an official event, except I think that it would just take a billion years to scramble it. Um, because there are many, many pieces. The Gigaminx, to give you an idea of comparison, the um, 3x3 cube, which we all know and love, has 20 scramblable parts. And the Gigaminx, Gigaminx has 230. So it is really a much, much, much bigger puzzle. And that means to get a proper randomization, you need to have a way of scrambling it. Um, but if you're doing a competition and you have a load of entrance and every cube needs to be scrambled uh, to the, the same standard, so you have fairness, it really doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. Oh, the anticipation was breaking me. You know, so without a method to... Um, Oh, that's nice. It's already in the bag. To um, scramble things quickly, like this, um, you know, the WCA leadership is so conservative that I don't think they would they would dare 
um, add really almost any new events. They haven't added uh, anything like clover cubes or really anything for a very long time. They just remove things. Uh, oh, okay, this is just the how to solve a gigaminx guide. Obviously, reduction is the way to do it. Um, we all know that. But I love higher order puzzles, so uh, it's cool that it comes in its nice bag. Again, it's not a Mega Minx, but you know. <laughs> uh, I like that it came already in the bag. That's pretty cool. Makes it feel a bit more premium. Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, that's lovely. The colors are really, really nice as well. Again, I really wish black caps were the standard for dodecahedrons, dodecahedri, but uh, what can you do? Ooh, oh, that feels good. And I can feel the magnetic click. So let's see if we um, rotate some of the layers here. What does it look like? We have, yeah, the magnets are in these kind of cool, colorful capsules, as you can see. Um, and they've all got different colors. That's pretty cool. I like that. Adds a bit of a flash of style. Uh, it looks like they've gone with primary plastic. Or no, it's not. It's just colored plastic all the way through. Never mind. Um, yeah, I mean, it. Uh, we'll compare the size quickly to the Yushin 5x5. Um, this one, the magnetized Gigamix is from Dian Sheng, by the way. So... Actually, it's a little bit, a little bit smaller. You can just about see that. Um, so this this cube is great too. I mean, the movement is so smooth. Uh, you can you can hear. I mean, the, the movement is just lovely. I mean, this got my solving times way down, still to embarrassingly high numbers. So I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, but it's it's really really nice and pleasant to solve on. Way more pleasant than the Shang Show could ever hope to be. Um, plus, it doesn't have stickers, which I hate with a passion. I've talked about it many times. And I'll continue to talk about it because stickers are the worst. Um, but yeah, so the magnetized version is a little bit smaller. It feels a little bit denser as a result. Um, a bit more weight due to the magnets, I presume. Um, but yeah, it's really, really nice looking. The shades, okay. The two greens, how are they? Oh, there's a big, big difference between the two greens. Perfect. Um, now let's see. If we, if we flip a gray edge to cream... Yeah, that's pretty distinguishable. If we keep moving it up towards white. Yeah, that might give me a little bit of trouble when moving quickly, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm just so excited about this. Now, if I turn both layers, they stick together pretty well. I think the magnet feel is a bit light, but again, with the dodecahedrons, that seems to be the norm. Um, not sure why that is. Probably something to do with the physics of solving a shape like this really quickly. Plus, it's easy to lose your grip on the thing. And also, you know, I just need to learn how to be more gentle with my turning, basically. Um, but I'm so happy that this exists. Um, and please, WCA, if you're listening, you know, um, various people have come up with ways to scramble this thing uh, that wouldn't take 100 years. So, you know, give them a listen. Hear them out. Um, the Gigaminx is a, is a really fun puzzle, and it's kind of a shame that, you know, the Megaminx, I mean, the only platonic solid in the WC li a lineup that has more than one size is the cube. Um, but, you know, we have, of course, many sizes of Pyraminx now. We have uh, speed cubing quality Gigaminxes. I'm sure they're going to come out with magnetized uh, higher order Minxes too at some point. You know, Terra Minx may be the 6x6 Royal Minx, whatever they call it. Um, so, you know, I would like to see at least one larger order, uh, dodecahedron, you know, get a master pyraminx in there, you know, because why do we have cubes from two to two by two to seven by seven and only one size of everything else? It kind of feels a bit wrong. I guess, you know, the cube is the originator of the whole hobby. So from that perspective, I can see it, but... Yeah, I mean, this is this is going to be great. This is going to be so much more fun to solve. Um, you know, that magnetic click. And uh, it's got a great, nice little bit of... Uh, ooh. I mean, it's not a huge amount of corner cutting, but pretty close to a piece. You can see it kind of stretching a little bit there, but it still goes through. 
Um, you still have to be pretty accurate with these guys. Um, it, it is much smaller than the Shang Show, that's for sure. And it's definitely smaller than the Yushin, so I'll have to get used to that. But oh, I'm just so happy to have a magnetized Gigaminx mass-produced in my hands. Uh, it feels really great. Um, you know, the, the layers all turn equally wonderfully. Um, if I need to do a quick turn of an inner layer, you know, it's it's really simple, straightforward. So I really feel uh, they've, they've kind of nailed this here. Um, and yeah, I mean, it costs, I want to say, gosh, I can't remember, 40 pounds, thereabouts, something like that. Because um, it's a big puzzle, right? 230 moving parts, scrambleable parts. Um, but yeah, totally worth it for me. Um, I'm a little embarrassed, like I said, that I bought the non-magnetized one immediately as soon as I saw a Strickless Gigmix. But I'm also not sorry because, um, you know, they probably saw some good sales and maybe that helped push Dian Sheng to make the magnetized one. So, you know, it's all good. Um, one thing you'll notice as well, and this is kind of a channel update matter, I suppose, but um, I'm not going to be buying as many big, giant, crazy puzzles from, you know, Very Puzzle or um, Z Cube, that kind of stuff anymore for a while because A, of the money issues and B, um, personally, you know, with the amount of stress I've been under in my personal life, with work and everything else, um, I found that speed solving has been much, much more fun for me. Um, I really enjoy the challenge of not just, you know, figuring out a solve for a really complex puzzle and then moving on with my life, but kind of learning the ins and outs, getting better with methods, you know, finding personal tricks. There's a real mis misconception in the twisty puzzle community versus the speed solving community that speed solving is all about algorithms, but uh, it's really, really not the case. I mean, um, you know, even on 3x3, the only algorithms I use are on the last layer. So, you know, two-thirds of the cube are solved intuitively. Um, and the more advanced you get, you know, with higher order cubes, the fraction of the time you spend on algorithms is even lower. Because, you know, you're solving all the centerpieces, um, putting different edges together, and you're doing that all intuitively as well, with very basic algorithms. So um, don't believe the hype from the Twisty Puzzle Forum. Speed solving has a lot of thought and strategy in it. Um, and I found that really rewarding. It's also very tactile. Um, and it's it's been a real help to me when I've been stressed to just work on my speed solving quietly and you know just try and get a little bit better and challenge myself a little bit more, but not push it too hard. Um, and I, I still have puzzles in my queue to solve that I still haven't solved as well. Um, so, all right, now we have the world's first stickerless Terra Minx. I have no doubt that within a week, Dian Sheng will announce their magnetized Terra Minx, and I'll have to buy that as well. But um, again, no regrets. Um, the dodecahedron is a beautiful shape. My favorite platonic solid. Ooh, that's big. Wow. All right, I like that. It's a nice, satisfying feel in the hand. So the Terra Minx, of course, is a Mega Minx with seven layers. Uh, so we have three layers on either side. Um, let's see, third inner layers turn nice, second layer very nice, outer layer probably the smoothest, that makes about, makes some sense. It's definitely a heavy puzzle. Um, I don't remember how many pieces are in the Terraminx. I think I have that. I did, um, this is very, very nerdy, but I, I did a formula. Um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, where I calculated the number of puzzles in um, different sizes of cubes and Mega Minxes, but I can't find it. I did this whole Mathematica workbook about twisty puzzles. <laughs> um, but I can tell you, let's see. Um, so a Minx, a Terra Minx has 1.1512973440184. Eight five eight one times ten to the five hundred and seventy third power possible scrambles. That's a lot. Um, now I can feel already that this one is more fussy about alignment here, but that's fair enough because the pieces are quite tiny. And once again, let's compare to the Yushin um, Gigaminx. You get an idea of relative size here. 
It feels much heavier and bigger, but it might be more illusory than, I, than I'm thinking here. Um, yeah, no, it's massive. <laughs> it's, it's definitely much bigger. Okay, um, but you can see that the layers are smaller, right? Um, if the layers were the same size proportionally as the gig minks, then it would be um, even more enormous. Uh, but there's a definite difference in density. I mean, to, to build a puzzle with these extra layers on it in this shape, I mean, you've got a lot of crazy um, mechanics going on inside there. Um, but yeah, I mean, the alignment is a bit more finicky. Um, let's see. But I think it's just going to be a matter of breaking it in because it feels quite dry. Um, so once I get a couple of solves in, you know, any, any bits of flash from the mold, you know, the factory will kind of get wiped off, um, from thousands of moves of solving. Um, I mean, already I can feel it kind of loosening up and you can see that the alignment, um, it's not, you know, I'm not making it perfect. Um, and it, it'll still go with a little bit of encouragement. So, uh, not too shabby. It looks beautiful. Same as the... Gigaminx from uh, Yushin. I love the orange side, the yellow as well, very vibrant. Um, again, I love black caps. If they make black cap accessory packs, I would be all over them so quickly, you don't even know. Um, the cream color, also sometimes problematic, but they've nicely set that apart from uh, the white. I think you can see a reasonable difference there between that and the white, which is really, which really pops. Um, yeah, it's a really satisfying feel in the hand. Um, these I don't even really try to properly speed solve. I've never tried that in the past. Um, I imagine, you know, I can get, if I can get the gigaminks down to 15 minutes, uh, which is about as, as well as I've done with the small amount of practice I've done on the Yushin, you know, maybe I can get this down to 20 minutes, 25, something like that. And that would be really satisfying for me. I know the world record's probably like eight minutes or something stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the way this puzzle looks feels great. Um, if I need to move an inner layer, that seems fine, and I can then move subsequent layers without a problem. Um, yeah, just feels really smooth. This is a speed solvable puzzle for sure. Um, it would be better, even better with magnets, of course, but uh, I'm hoping that Dian Shang is going to continue their trend of making higher order puzzles with magnets. They've done it with the cubes, They've gone all the way up to 11 by 11 with uh, magnets, and they're coming out with a 12 by 12 cube with magnets, which I've already seen previewed on a couple of channels. So I hope they'll make um, the 6 by 6 minx, 7 by 7 minx with magnets at least, and just keep going. Give us a pet of minx with magnets. Just go crazy. Idiots like me will buy them. I guarantee you this. Um, yeah, so that is the 7 by 7 stickerless Terra minx from Yushin. Uh, super happy with it. Feels great in the hand. Um, you know, as I say, you know, I, I found that when I need to relax and de-stress and, you know, I've got anxiety disorders bothering my life, um, you know, speed solving really gets me into a kind of flow state where I can be almost kind of meditative and just enjoy solving a puzzle. And the longer the solve, um, the more relaxing I find it. Um, you know, and I really love the process of solving things by reduction. So, Gigaminxes, Terraminxes, the 6x6 six six cube, 7x7 seven seven cube, 8x8 eight eight cubes, all that stuff has been seeing a lot of use, whereas my, you know, very oddball puzzles from very puzzle or whatever, I solved a couple of times, and then I thought, well, wow, that took a long time, and then kind of put them to the side as collector's items. Um, but these guys are, are the kind of puzzles I'm going to use a lot, so that's why I decided to pick these up after a while out of the out of the twisty puzzle game here. So this is the new um, Master Pyraminx. We have a solving guide. It has a Chinese section. I don't know if there's an English version. Doesn't appear to be, but you know, honestly. I did a tutorial on this, I'm pretty sure, um, just on how to solve it by reduction. So this is not magnetized, but it does have a clicky mechanism, as you can hear. Um, it has ball bearings, I believe. Um, yeah, it feels much more snappy and smooth. Um, you know, this reminds me of the feeling of the recent range of Chi-E non-WCA puzzles, like the um, their version of the Ivy Cube. Not the Ivy Cube, the um, uh, Rex Cube. Yeah, Rex Cube. Um, it's got that kind of satisfying 
clicking feel, you know you've made a turn when you've made a turn. Um, and it does help kind of pull things to a halt, um, but it moves very smoothly as you can see. Very, very nice. Um, we've got a typical primary color scheme, yellow, green, blue, and red. Uh, we'll just scramble it up a little bit, see what it looks like. Uh, and just mix it up a little bit. We've got our trivial tips. Of course, I have that whole series of puzzles uh, from Shang Show, the Magic Towers, which are the Jinx Pier Minx, essentially. Um, so their corners actually mean something, but this is a Pier Minx, so the tips are just trivial. Um, don't really mean anything. It looks nice, scrambled. I mean, it's only a mild scramble. I haven't gone whole hog, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty. Um, it's got rounded corners, as you can see as well, which I kind of prefer. Um, very pointy pyraminxes can, uh, you can actually poke yourself pretty good with those. And if you're solving uh, a larger order one, um, you know, you want stability, you want something that's easy to grip, and this definitely gives you that. Uh, it feels very stable in the hand. It's a little bit slippy because there's some lube on it out of the box, but it's not excessive amounts. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to enjoy solving on this. Um, along with getting better at the dodecahedrons, I also want to work on my tetrahedrons. Um, I did my best pyraminx time so far was 5.9 seconds, so very far away from the world record of like one point something. <laughs> um, I don't know what the unofficial world record for make uh, for master pyraminx is, um, but you know, as always, I'll just try and keep improving slowly. So long as I can beat myself, um, put a little practice in, then I'll be I'll be satisfied. So I'll be solving that shortly. Then finally, last but not least, we have the 5x5. Five five. This is a pillowed um, Professor Pyraminx. I think that's the official title. Um, I think the, the original one was released by um, the Meffert Puzzle imprint. Um, but I don't buy stuff from them because the quality is not really expensive. And I found the quality to be terrible, frankly. Um, so I'm happy to see this. Uh, I think this is going to be an actual... I mean, besides the fact that they make me clever, um, I think this will be an actually kind of usable 5x5 five five pyraminx. It's a nice hefty size as well. It's always satisfying. Oh, look at that. Now, I'm not sure... Um, I've, I've seen a video out there about... Um, if you go to YouTube channel, I think it's called Coren Puzzles, and the guy built this ridiculously huge higher order um, pyraminx that has just an insane number of layers. And uh, he talked about why you need this kind of pillowing um, when you're making these big pyraminx puzzles. And I don't remember what the exact reason was, but uh, it's kind of a physical constraint, basically. If you want them to be turnable in the way that you need the layers to work for a pyraminx, um, then you have to make that sacrifice in the same way that the series of um, Jing's pyraminx puzzles from Shang Shou are also pillowed just, um, you know, to have the level of mobility you need in a pyramidal structure, a tetrahedral structure, um, you need to have a certain shape when things get really out of whack uh, and the layers get bigger. Um, so the trivial tips are actually a little bit stiff, um, which is good because then you don't knock them by mistake. Um, how's the other one? Yeah, same. Uh, the layers each feel pretty good. Uh, I don't feel much difference between them. Uh, yeah, that's very nice to move. Same, same again from this direction. Everything moves really well. This also has a clicky mechanism. I'm presuming again that it's going to be uh, ball bearings of some type. Um, I don't want to pull it too hard to see, but um, I believe... Oh, and you can see there's kind of a, uh, a lump there where it's going to stick in. So maybe maybe it's not ball bearings as such. It's just a kind of kind of clicks into place as those two pieces meet. Um, but yeah, any which way I flip this around, it feels really comfortable in the hand. Definitely going to be fun to solve. I've never solved a 5x5 five five pyramid before, so I'm not going to scramble it now. I'm going to do my usual thing of just kind of studying it a little bit, trying to work out what a good strategy would be. Uh, I'll probably start with reduction, since that works for me for the Master Pyraminx. Um, and if, I, if that turns out to be really inefficient, then I'll I'll research some other methods, see what other people have done, uh, and try and come up with my own 
take on it. But yeah, that is the Huanglong 5x5 triangle cube, as they call it. Um, we would call it a Professor Pyraminx or a 5x5 Pyraminx. Um, so yeah, just um, super happy with my puzzle haul today. We've got um, some mega cool dodecahedrons. Got a brand new 6x6. Six six. Uh, got a new Mega Minx to try. And uh, two new Pyraminxes of higher order as well. So this is all the stuff I love in one big box. Um, I do have a plan to pick up a couple more things. I'm going to wait a bit um, and see... What's coming down the pike as far as more higher order um, minx puzzles? I do hope we get more, uh, ter you know, Terra Minx M and stuff like that. Uh, I will buy those instantaneously, no matter what my bank balance looks like. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful. If you guys are looking out for these puzzles, um, so far I'm really happy with the quality of everything here. Um, I mean, it, it's some of it's going to be a matter of taste, particularly if you're a speed solver. Um, the Diane, for example, is noticeably smaller. Um, then the uh, Yufu, Yufu V2M, which is the other main um, puzzle for a lot of Mega Ming solvers. So, you know, how big your hands are, what your, your style of solving is, that will affect things. Same with the Aoshi. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the MGC. Um, it has a different feel, which I like. Um, it's a little bit less squishy, a little bit more solid and crunchy. Um, that works for me. I don't really know how it would work for everybody. Um, however, this is a bit different because this is your only option for magnetized Giga, Giga Minx. Uh, I think it looks and feels fantastic. Um, worth every penny. If you have any interest in Giga Minx, just, just buy this. Um, and you know what? If Honestly, if you, if you can't afford the magnetized one and the Yushin one's a bit cheaper, you know, uh, this is great for fun speed solving as well. Um, without magnets, you know, you will overturn here and there if you're going for speed. But, I mean, it's a really well-constructed puzzle and Yushin deserves your money. Um, so yeah, with that, plus the new, the new Terra Minx, we'll be having a lot of fun in the next few days and weeks. So, uh, I hope that was enjoyable for you guys. Sorry for not doing puzzles for a while. I hope my kind of channel update at the beginning gave you some context on that. You know, as, um, financial pressures ease and hopefully as my health gets a little bit better, a little bit better, um, you know, I'm put, putting some money aside for future purchases, and I'll be able to show you some more puzzle stuff. If you want some more detail on any of these, like if you want to see a, a solve of the 5x5 Pyraminx or the Gigaminx or a tutorial on any of these, let me know. I'm happy to try and do something for you. Um, give me a nice goal uh, to do for my next set of videos. I've got a lot more RPG stuff coming because, I, again, I've been getting rid of a lot of board games. <laughs> so I've got a lot of RPGs uh, in replacement for those because I actually play those online frequently. And the board games have sat fallow during the pandemic and haven't really picked them back up again. Um, but yeah, I would like to do more puzzle stuff. It's just that I can't buy so much anymore. Um, and also there's some storage issues as well. But as I get rid of board games, that will free up a little bit too. So eventually there will be more twisty puzzle stuff on the, on the channel for you to enjoy. Until then, I hope this uh, tides you over for a little bit. As always, leave your comments down below if you want to know any more about my, the puzzles. Um, as I break them in, do some solves and stuff. Feel free to ask um, if there's anything more you want me to do tutorial-wise, you know, walkthrough solves, anything like that. Just give me a shout-out in the comments. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're keep keeping well, keeping safe, uh, and having a great time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.